You've probably seen the Laura Geller Powder Foundation all over social media lately, and today we're going to talk about it. I purchased the Laura Geller Natural Finish Full Face Kit in the shade Fair, which comes with the Baked Balance and Brighten Powder, the Baked Blush and Brighten, the Baked Natural Glow Highlighter, and a retractable angled kabuki brush. I think there are some things that are really fantastic about these products, but I also think there are some things you should know before you buy this. So I'm gonna give you my honest opinion on each product and some tips and or things I wish I knew beforehand. So make sure to stick around for those. Since this is a powder foundation, I put on hydrating primer first and then went in with my concealer for my under eyes and blemishes, all of which will be listed in the description box below. Then I went in using the retractable brush that came in my kit. Now, as you can see from this picture, this shade runs warm. Now, for everyone out there that uses my shade as a reference for shades that match your skin, please note that I'm wearing a good amount of self-tanner today. This is not my first time wearing this powder. I tried it out last week, and even though I went with the shade Fair, which is the second to lightest shade, it ended up being too deep and too warm for me. So I'm using self-tanner today to warm myself up a bit and see if I can get a better match. So... Tip number one, it says on their site that this is shade adjusting. In fact, it says our marbleized bake foundation contains multiple color correcting shades, which will self adjust. Don't worry, even if you pick one shade lighter or darker, the shade will still work for you. Now, I'm not coming down on this brand because many brands use the term self-adjusting when it comes to shades, but I'm not a fan of that term because I think it can be confusing to the consumer. I personally did not find this to be shade adjusting, and when I went through and read some of the reviews, I noticed that some other people also mentioned that the shade they selected online was deeper and warmer than they thought it would be too. I felt like it was important to mention that because many people purchase this online without being able to swatch first. So I personally just wish I had known that before selecting my shade, in which case I would have bumped up a shade lighter to the shade porcelain. As far as how the powder performs, it's very smooth and built up nicely. I've used this brush a couple of times now, and although it's very soft, it sheds like crazy. So I finally gave up and just went in with my trusty Real Techniques brush that I like to use for powder foundations. And as always, I like to press the powder into the skin versus buffing, as that will do the most to give a smooth, poreless finish. Then at the very end, I go in with a very soft, fluffy brush to buff the excess off. So, tip number two. If you've used other mineral type powder foundations, for example, the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural or the Laura Mercier Mineral Powder, you'll notice that you get a very subtle sheen with those powders. I personally love that slight sheen because I think it makes for a more skin-like look, but if you don't like that, then this might be a better option for you because this gave me more of a smooth matte finish. However, I also got the Laura Geller highlighter in my kit, which we'll talk about in a minute, which she says you can apply all over your face lightly for that subtle sheen if you want. So just be aware of the finish. As far as skin types, I think this would work well for most skin types. I didn't feel like it was drying out my normal to slightly dry skin, but I especially think this would work well for oily to normal skin types. And before I forget, I'm going to pause here to tell you that I have a question for you at the end, so please stick around because I really want your opinion. Okay, moving on. After I did some contouring, I went in with the blush. Let me tell you, I love this blush. It is so beautiful, a perfect pinky shade, so smooth. I have absolutely nothing but wonderful things to say about it. Well done, Laura. Then I went in with the highlighter. So the highlighter is very subtle. At first, I wasn't sure if anything was going on, but then I noticed that very subtle sheen that I love. I love that this doesn't look glittery and I'm really happy I purchased it. But I also know that the drugstore brands have really upped their highlighter game in the past few years, and there are some really good, less expensive highlighter alternatives at the drugstore, which I feel like I just want to throw that out there for those of you that don't know if you want to spend money on the whole kit. So overall, the Laura Geller highlighter is not a must-have in my book, but I'm still really happy I have it, and I plan to use it with my other foundations. Now for tip number three, after I put on the rest of my makeup, I went in with a finishing spray to break up any powdery looking spots. I felt like that really brought it all together. 
I normally do that with powder foundations to complete the look. And like my other powder foundations, I found that that final touch made it look more skin-like. And you don't need to use an expensive spray. I think any drugstore finishing spray would work. I use this Physicians Formula 24 Karat Spray that has gold shimmer in it. And when I first put it on, I was like, oh no, I ruined the whole look, it's too sparkly. But then I just patted it into the skin and all was well. <laughs> so before I put up comparison swatches and a cute little clip of Norm, here's a quick overview of each product. So first, the Balance and Brighten Powder. Really nice, lasts a long time on the skin. Here I am at four hours after application, and here it is at the end of the night. The only thing I don't like about this is how tricky it was to get the right shade, since you probably won't be able to try it on first, obviously, if you're buying it online, and the fact that the shade, in my personal opinion, seems to run very warm. The Baked Blush, perfection. Nothing else needs to be said. The Baked Natural Glow Highlighter, very nice very subtle, gives a candlelit glow to the face, but if you're trying to save some money, there are great drugstore alternatives. And the brush, although it's very soft and convenient for travel, unfortunately, there was just way too much shedding for me to be able to recommend it. So now, my question for you. When I was on the Laura Geller site just a few minutes ago, I noticed that they have a new liquid foundation called Double Take Liquid Foundation. Is that something you're interested in seeing reviewed, or do you have another foundation that you're curious about right now? It's been a while since I asked, so I would love to hear what foundations you're interested in seeing a review on. Please let me know in the comments below, and have a beautiful week.